Hello friends and welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, October 6th and it is a sunny, beautiful fall day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Got a lot of outdoor things to do today so looking forward to getting out there and knocking out some of the uh, fall chores uh, that tend to accumulate very quickly. Ah, today I got something uh, pretty cool. I'm going to be talking about a uh, gift that I received a while back from, I, I believe, I'm almost certain, and I should have written it down, uh, that this was from our buddy Sigma Man Tony in Rhode Island. Uh, he sent me a couple of tobaccos uh, a while back, and one of them was this beautiful jar of Esoterica Dunbar, which is a Virginia Preak. Uh, this was chosen as the tobacco of the month back in September, and I just haven't had a chance to do the, the impression video yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, um, I'm doing it today. So, uh, this was uh, about yay full when we started, so I've been, you know, so it's obviously not terrible. Um, and yeah, I want to talk a little bit about it. It's, uh, it's an interesting blend. It's got, um, well, it's, it's primarily a Virginia Preak. What is Virginia Preak? It's got, uh, according to the Esoterica folks, it's got uh, seven different types of Virginias in it. I have trouble coming up with three, so, you know. Uh, I could probably do more than that, but, and Perique, and it does have uh, an apricot topping. Now, I'll tell you right off the bat, I've found no evidence of this being topped with apricot, or anything for that matter, but I don't know how old this is, so uh, I've had this for probably four years, probably, at least three, probably four, uh, maybe more than that, actually. Anyway, it's it's been at least, uh, at least three or four years. And I have no idea how long Tony had it prior to sending it to me. Uh, I can tell you, and this may be very difficult to get up on the screen, but you can see some of the tobacco down there at the bottom. It does have a slight uh, white tinge, uh, white haze over it, uh, suggesting that it has molded a bit uh, or produced bloom or sugar crystals for those folks that don't like science. Uh, but it takes time for that mold to form, so I'm guessing it's at least five years old and maybe older than that. Uh, so the reason I'm going into the age so much is not because I, I'm thinking the, the blend has changed that much, although it may have, uh, but the topping is probably vanished, uh, which me being a non-aromatic guy is probably a good thing. Uh, also, you know, with it being from the Lakeland uh, district and all that, uh, no, no evidence of any Lakeland topping, nothing, uh, just tobacco flavor. <clears throat> so I've already packed this in a Bing's favorite, mostly to save you the trouble of watching me try to pack out of this bowl, uh, out of this jar. But, uh, you know, use your hand like this as a funnel and you just pour it in. It works great. I have my spooky lighter because it is officially spooky season, October. Eric, it doesn't start until October. Mark, it doesn't start until October. And Die Hard is not a Christmas movie, but we'll get into that at the end of, of, of uh, next month. So, first light, Virginia. Very much a Virginia blend. Spooky season. The Frankenstein monster from Larry Blackett. Buttons for your britches. And soon we will be raising Bela from its crypt, from his crypt, and getting out uh, Igor the Tamper for the Halloween season. So, looking forward to that. If you haven't watched me for a while, uh, you may not know what I'm talking about, but I've got a special Halloween pipe. You'll see it. Oh, I'm such a bad salesman. Hit hit the link, the, link the hit the hit the subscribe and the bell and and comment and and like and all that, or else you'll miss me uh, taking out the Halloween pipe. I mean, you wouldn't want that to happen, would you? All right, so we got second light now. So this, I should have mentioned, this is a beautiful tobacco. It's. Uh, 
you know, very high quality. Uh, hopefully you can see that. It is actually pressed and then cut so you get some of those long strands like you see right there. Uh, but also a lot of sort of broken flake. Um, packs very easily, lights very easily. Has a moderate moisture content so it's not dry at all. And as I say that, I let it go out. But uh, it's it's been absolutely a pleasure to smoke in terms of the quality of the tobacco and the ability to pack it and light it and all that kind of stuff. Functionally, it's fantastic. Flavor-wise, which is, of course, what you care about, probably. This is a Virginia blend, and it's good quality Virginia. It's got a lot of bright Virginia, which is not my favorite. Uh, I'm more a fan of the dark red, you know, stove-fired kind of Virginias, but stoved, not stove-fired. But this does have depth to it, so it's not all high notes and uh, it's probably about a 50-50 mix, actually. So it's not offensive to me as a guy who wouldn't like to smoke something like, uh, I think Oil like Golden Slice is one that's very far to the bright Virginia side of things. Uh, I, I don't like that kind of thing, but this is this is moderate for me, and I'm enjoying it. What I'm not enjoying... is my inability to find Perique. I'd really like it to be there. This would be really good with Perique. On the retrohale, I, I just retrohaled three times in case you weren't <laughs> paying attention. Um, one of those times I got a little bit of a spice hit. Um, it's, it's hit or miss with it. So maybe it's just that the Perique is there and with age it's diminished and you occasionally get a little pop of it, but flavor-wise I'm just not getting anything. None of that plumminess, figginess that you get from Perique. But having said that, it's good. You know, it's it's a good solid Virginia blend and I obviously I've smoked a lot of it during the month of September and I guess what would I would I I guess the best way I can put this is I smoked a lot of this and I don't really remember it it was an easy thing to smoke it was pleasant it was easy to put in a pipe and go and do something and but there's a lot of blends like that, you know? I don't know how available this is. I mean, some of the esoterica blends are impossible to find and, you know, ridiculously expensive and everything else. If this is one of them, um, there's so many blends that are like this that you could... You know, I, I would almost say that if you're a Virginia lo lo lover and you're you know, okay with the bright Virginias, this could be an everyday smoke for you because it's something you just don't, don't have to think about it. But if it's, you know, ridiculously expensive or you can't find it, or, you know, that's crazy. But there's a lot of other tobaccos that would fit that bill anyway. So, I wouldn't go hunting down uh, the blend. I just wouldn't do that. But I don't do that for anything, really. Uh, and that's one of those things you go through phases. You know, there was a, there was a time when I did it. There was a time when I bought the, uh, you know, whatever the latest release was or the limited releases and all that. And I just got got to the point where I know what I like and that's what I smoke. So yeah, uh, Esoterica Dunbar. I'm glad for the opportunity to try it and 
obviously had a good month smoking it. Um, so enjoyable. Thank you, Tony in Rhode Island, for giving me the op uh, opportunity to try it. Signal man Tony from Rhode Island. He's a he's a good guy. He's a frequent attendee in the live stream, so it's good to see him. So yeah, got to do some outdoor stuff today. Got to uh, finally pull out the gardens. I think a couple pepper plants. I still want a pepper, but I don't think they got time. Everything else is long gone. So I'm gonna clean them out and get them ready for the winter. And I'm gonna finish building that shed. Believe it or not, I I had to drop that when uh, I went off to Pittsburgh, and have not had time or weather allowing me to get back to it. So hopefully, I'm gonna finish that today. And uh, other than that, just uh, do what else I can and uh, see, where, see where we get to before the sun goes down. So, with that, I think I'm going to make this a short one. If it is short, I have no idea how long I've rambled right now. Uh, so we'll keep it short. We will uh, tie it up with just one quick mention of the really awful devastation that's occurred in uh, due to this recent hurricane you know in places like uh, North Carolina where there are entire towns that are gone and I don't know why we're not seeing it I, I, I don't know why it's not you know a big story like you know I've seen hurricanes covered 24 7 that didn't cause damage and this is removed towns and it's barely getting noticed so Keep those people in your thoughts and prayers and seek out the information and, and realize just how bad this is. And if you can figure out why nobody cares, let me know because I, I care. I, I hope those people are well. So keep them in your prayers uh, and we will hopefully see them get into a better situation in the near future. So with that, friends, I'm going to finish this up. I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday and are looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.